JSON API from our code by working with columns and data frames and so on to implement our business logic here, which, yeah, well, honestly is not so sophisticated or useful. However, it demonstrates well how we can use these functions and reference columns and so on. Another thing I wanted to show you is that we can use SQL strings as well to achieve the very same thing. In order to do so, we would use the Spark session. Let me open a new line. Spark session. So we reference the Spark that we're reading up here, that we're creating here up, up here, the Spark session. So, and on the Spark session, there is a method called dot SQL. And the SQL function or method use or takes an argument, which is the SQL query as a string. And in order to use our data frame in an SQL query, we have to register it as temp view. And therefore on the DF, so we need a data frame reference as we have in our DF variable, we can call create or replace temp view. And that's what we're going to call. And in here we have to specify a name and here we are simply going to call it DF. So what's happening is that we register this data frame for the SQL context within the Spark session. So Spark, the Spark session knows what we are referencing if we type DF in an SQL query. So for example, what we could say is select asterisk from DF, which will give us back a data frame. So the SQL functions function returns a data frame. So we get a new data frame object. So on the result, we can also call dot show, which will print the data frame to the console. However, we can also create more sophisticated SQL queries. And therefore, I wanted to show you what or which functions we can use within an SQL function. Therefore, I will go to spark.apache.org, documentation, latest release, and here in the programming guides, or no, here in the API docs, you can find also the SQL built-in functions. And here you can see the syntax you use for writing SQL queries in Apache Spark. And there are many, many functions as well. These are actually the same as we use from the Python API, but we can use them also in an SQL string. I will show you how we do this now. Let's say we wanted to implement the logic from above. Therefore, we would say select and then date, which is a column in our DF. And then we want to um, cast the date column to a string. Therefore, we use the cast function. And we can look up in the reference how we can use the cast function. So I will simply search for cast here on this documentation. And here we can see we use the cast function like this cast and then the column and then as the date type, a data type. So we, we say cast and then date as string. And also we have used the date add. And here we can see the rep, uh, the syntax for how we use date add. So first we pass in a column and then the number of days we want to add. So before we cast, we say date add, and then we use date and two. And this entire thing we want to cast as string. And then we want to use an al alias as well. And here we use the as from the SQL syntax. And then we say trans formed date and all of that we select from the DF and then we select also the date and let's see if that one's working correctly now. If I execute this, we would like to see two times the same data frame printed to the console. Now, generally I do not recommend using SQL queries in uh, the string form as we've done here. And you can already see why, because you know, if we use the Python API, we can have some nice um, variables for column transformations and so on. So we can actually write some clean code. We can assign some name to a transformation and reuse them in later transformations. So I would argue that this code up here is way easier readable than this one down here. Also, if you have a typo here, so we, let's say we have type 
typed cat and instead of cast, the IDE won't tell us because this is simply a string. But if we, for example, typed uh, cat here instead of cast, the IDE will, will give us an error because it cannot resolve this function from the function list. I think cat is actually a function. No, it's not. So we will get a, an error if we execute this quite early on. While here, um, it will just try to execute this one and say, okay, I didn't find this function name that you're trying to refer to in your SQL expression. So now we see, ah, we also had the concatenation with the hello world. We can also do that in the SQL query. But here we can see that our also our dates have been increased by two days. And we have a new alias up here. We could also use a concat around all of that. So that would look like a concat. And then we have this entire thing. And the literal. So here we use single quotes because we are in double quotes. Hello world. So that would be the concat call. And this should work as well. If not, I have to look up the syntax for the concat function. Um, but yeah, as you can see, these queries, queries can become quite yeah, complex and not so easy to read even for yeah, simpler things that we're trying to do here. And actually, yeah, we have, now we have the same result as we had before. In the assignment, please go ahead, register your data frame as a temp view so that you can use it within your SQL query and then use spark.sql to execute an SQL query against your data frame.